continues after this. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Four games across the country, three of them are at halftime. We'll fill you in on all that has taken place right now. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the half, sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Welcome once again to Penn's Oil at the Half, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. Our halftime score, 43-32. The Quakers are leading Florida. Three-pointers, anyone? Pennsylvania, 11 of 17 from behind the arc. Greg, there is nothing like making shots. And when you can make them from behind the arc, you can get off to a great start. Entertaining game. Florida not out of it because they shoot the three-point ball well as well. Florida tied for tops in the nation with 9.4 a game. But right now, it's Penn doing the damage from behind the line. Meanwhile, in Indianapolis, Ohio State with a 38-25 lead early in the second half on Murray State. Let's take you to the RCA Dome and join Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery. 17 and a half minutes remaining. Ohio State leads Murray State by 13. Murray State has called a 20-second timeout. This is first round action of the South Region in Indianapolis, the RCA Dome. Murray State has struggled offensively. It's worst first half of the season. And for the game, the Racers are still shooting just 32% from the floor and 55% from the free throw line. This is the first of two games here tonight. Later tonight, the final game of the four here. UCLA and Detroit, the winners meet on Saturday. The other matchup on Saturday already set. The number one seed, Auburn, pulled away from Winthrop. And Auburn will meet Oklahoma State, a winner today over Syracuse in the 8-9 game. Very tough spot to inbound the ball down in that coffin corner. Uh, Scooney almost came up with a, a grab there. You get a feeling there's a little more energy with Murray State? Yes. The uh, inability of Spencer with his back to dominate. Murray not a prolific offensive player thus far tonight. That's part of their problem inside. It's going to be guard oriented unless the other guys step up. Virgil the only one contributing down low. Murray State one and nine all time in the NCAA tournament. Their only win was in 1988. They beat North Carolina State, then coached by Jim Galvano. 78-75 in Lincoln, Nebraska. Then they lost the eventual national champion Kansas in the next round. Gave Kansas a good game. Lost by three. Shot rejected by Johnson. His third. He's becoming the postmaster general. Get it out of town. They stayed on the floor. Was poised. Didn't bite whatsoever and uh, went up just a tad after did not keep it in play unfortunately for Ohio State all inbounded to Dwayne Virgil look at that shot Reese with a shot clock running out smart huh I think he's the only one in that club that knew exactly shot it with two on the clock 16 for Reese he's almost single handedly getting Murray State back into the game here and then he bumped Penn with the chest and that's three fouls on Reese. Well we've seen his ability to win games get them back in games and this one not quite as dramatic as the final in their championship but uh, he does have range and he's got a little courage. Largest lead for Ohio State was 17 points it's down to 10. Penn trying to get it back to 13 no luck there rattled out. Great play by Singleton to take it away from Virgil and save it in the corner. And that's why you like point guard. You see him drag it out. Red shot was deflected by Virgil. Out of bounds. Last touch by Brian Brown. Now the ability of Scooney to recognize. You think you've got one going the other way. Nice hustle. The save. But right here, the back out. They get a pretty good shot from Michael Red. Chance to get it back into single digits now for the racers of Murray State. Reese, air ball, and Kick. nobody back. This is a three on all. Oh, Red. Wow. He can do it with either hand or with both hands, but that's simply not reacting defensively. That set that in. A bunch of white shirts out there, Sean. So Ohio State with a 12-point lead on Murray State and Clark Kellogg breathing comfortably 
We'll move you from Indianapolis to Orlando. We're in the first round action taking place there. St. John's with a 38-25 lead on the Bulldogs of Samford. Let's take you down to the Orlando Arena and join Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner. 18-20 to go in the second half of play. St. John's on top of Samford, 38-26. St. John's the third seed, and Samford the 14th seed. St. John's led this game by 11 points at the end of the first half of play by as many as 18. But Samford, here in the second half, they look a little more aggressive, a lot more aggressive than they did at the beginning of this game. Well, they clearly look more comfortable, Gus, and that's really the story of this game. Sanford so uncomfortable at the start of the game, missing all their shots, and now Barkley's going to get, or excuse me, Thornton's going to get called for the offensive foul. So St. John's jumped off to a 13-point lead early in this game. Samford is now down 10 at 38 to 28. One other game to tell you about in Denver. First round action in the West. Missouri trails New Mexico 34 to 28 in the second half. As we reported earlier, yes, long days and some long weeks coming up ahead. We'll send you back to Seattle for the second half of Penn and Florida right after this. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Give funds of America's colleges and universities. White gets the roll as he put it up with the left hand. In a great spot on the floor, too. Get him the basketball, let him operate a little bit. He's frustrated, but now he's seen the ball go through the hoop at least this one time in the second half. Nine points for Albert White, the transfer from Michigan. Long cannot hit it from the outside, and White with a defensive rebound. I try to get White another touch this trip down the floor. Six-point game, Lobos in front. Grower going behind the back. Grower, three-pointer, got it. There's a shot in stride. Nice little flip pass, too, by Hard setting that screen up front. First three points of the night for Brian Grower. Second three this half for Missouri. Thomas wheeling in on Hard. He tried the runner. He's got to space himself better than that. White gives it up. Grower, same spot. Now, didn't get the legs underneath him. He didn't catch the ball cleanly because it was low. That allows you not to get your legs down strongly underneath you for the jump shot. But Hafer snatched the rebound and a reset for Missouri. They trail by three. Dueling the stop and go. A bump from Robinson on the pass off. And the freshman, John Robinson II, will pick up the personal foul. Good things will happen to you if you start to go towards the basket. Here's the first at the basket. It's a simple call, it's a foul, but good result. Harge on a spin move, soft touch for the big man. I love the look on his face also. It was New Mexico pushing the tempo a bit and they got down the floor quickly. Missouri may be a little off balance, a foul call. Watch Harge jump right here. He balances himself and gets some good strength underneath the jump shot. Timeout, 15.58 to play, second half, New Mexico, up by one. Fourth exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Genuine Chevrolet, the United States Air Force, Nike, and by Gillette Mach 3. Welcome back to beautiful Seattle. This is the West Region from Key Arena, filled to capacity. In the first round, Pennsylvania shocking six seed Florida, 43 to 32. John Sunvold, you've had a chance to look at the stats, the numbers, the first half. What sticks out? Well, I think one of the key areas, obviously the three-point shooting, but the pressure has not forced many turnovers. As you see the numbers, the three-point shooting, 11 of 17. Penn has had four games where they've made 11 all year, and that's been the best. So they're already there at halftime. Obviously, Ryan and Lango shooting lights out. Five turnovers only by Penn and Florida forces nearly 20. Mike Miller begins to move on the perimeter, beginning things in the second half. Again, the switching defense is out front, has forced the Gators to pound it in down low and take more looks down there. Miller for three. Three-second violation called inside on Florida. 
And every time they have a mismatch, they're switching out, they're trying to go down low. That time just simply standing in the lane. Haslam was caught. And they employ some full court man to man. And just straight up defense. Try to trap him at half court. It's tipped, and the ball's out of bounds, and it's off the floor. And close, Kevin, to a 10 second pick. I'm here with legendary St. John's coach Lou Carnesecca. Coach Carnesecca. Oh, and a wired mouth. And Owens only played six minutes the first half because he had the two early fouls. Michael Jordan missing the three and picked up by Kenyon Weeks. Kevin Florida, not many opportunities to push the ball and either get open looks at the basket or open three points. Penn doing a great job defensively of getting back. Now the call on Jordan defending Shannon as Missouri has taken a lead in the second half for the first time tonight over New Mexico. St. John's over Sanford, really only one big upset today. And that was Louisville losing to Creighton earlier on. And the comeback by Dana Altman's squad. Rodney Buford, an outstanding talent. Has one the miss. Owens got the rebound. Down low, they go to Romance. Doubled and Haslam was reaching in. Well, the key to Romancic is the fact that he can post up and go either to his left shoulder or his right shoulder with his back facing the basket. He'll spin either way and can have a little jump hooks. He's patient enough. Let the cutter clear. Now go to work. Angle to inbound. Jordan catches. Great fake. Shannon flies by. And they double clutched. And Jordan passed up a couple opportunities. Romancic into traffic. Rebounded inside with the crushing by Weeks. Two minutes gone in the second half. Weeks from Haslam. Rejected inside by Owens. And Owens came from about the top of the key. Miller gets it a fresh 35 on the shot clock. Shannon. Haslam is there, but he's doubled. Shannon, a little two-man game with Haslam. Again doubled, squeezes the trigger and can't get it to go. I like what Billy Donovan has said to at halftime. Let's pound it in, make him guard us at the rim. Florida has been scoreless the last three and a half minutes. Romancic driving inside and catapulting himself up and fouled on the play. Was Romancic on the drive, his third. Shannon took the brunt of it. Well, Romancic right here has got his head down, and Shannon comes from the weak side to take the charge. Good play. His man had cut through, and Shannon just simply stopped and waited. You can see Jed Ryan clearing through. Good recognition. 22nd timeout taken. Eddie Shannon, a great story. College basketball's most courageous player is voted by the U.S. Basketball Writers Association of America. Only has one eye. An accident in seventh grade when he was hit in the eye by a rock on the playground. His vision has been bad, but it grew worse over the last couple years. And he had the bad eye removed. Where's the goggles? But he has a prosthesis there, and that is what the glasses are for to protect his eyes. One good eye, which he has 20 20 vision in. And incredible if you think about playing a game of basketball. Your peripheral vision, where can you see if the point guard, where are they coming from behind you? So amazing what this young man has accomplished. I would assume depth perception is something that he's going to always have to contend with, especially on the basketball court, but you wouldn't know it watching him play. No, you would have no idea. Forty-three, thirty-two, Penn. A little full court pressure by the Quakers now, but comfortably handled by the skater team. Shannon working on Michael Jordan. Miller putting up a three and buries it. Picture perfect release of the basketball is Mike Miller. Langle the other way. 
Owens to Jordan. Back to Owens inside, and a foul is called. He came close, and the shot couldn't get it to go. Well, Michael Jordan again hesitant to shoot it, but made a good decision. Still wants to control the tempo on the offensive end, and that's how he he does it. Only two of seven from the field, one of five from the three-point line. So that time elected as the Owens was cutting to the basket. Shannon's third foul. Here's a tough kid. Comes from a tough family too. So tough. His sister plays rugby. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> so a little broken jaws. Nothing in that family. Shannon and Haslam check out. Stolt is back in and Teddy DePay, Florida high school basketball legend. Owens banks that in. 24 hour bank card. Traveled all the way from Penn to Seattle. And they throw it away. The floor. It is Sullivan. And on the tie up, it goes to floor. Well, here's that uh, rule that is half crazy. Penn, who I think is on defense, causes it, should get the ball, except they got possession on the floor, and then the jump ball creates. So Penn had possession. The tie up forced by the Florida Gator Gators. So the ball stays with Florida. Grand dunk for his first trip. Even the good defense doesn't get rewarded. Well, here's the thing. I mean, that. There's the possession, I guess, once he gets on top of it. I don't like that call because the defense should be rewarded. Ten point Quaker lead. Stolt to Shannon, two weeks. He'll go inside. Oh, what Find a pass. What a pass. What a soft pass that was. And on the move, tough to make. Trouble now getting it out. Sullivan, Jordan open, the fake Shannon bit, and an easy two. Well, the patience by Mike Sullivan. He looked like he was in trouble, but patient enough to finally look up the floor. In the right, Owens defending, knocked it away. Shot clock at 24 with four minutes gone here in the second half. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed seven million dollars to the General Scholarship Funds of America's college and universities. Miller's got a bloody knee, and they're working on it. As you can see in the left-hand portion of your screen, over in the corner there. There we go. They will get him out of the lineup. Teddy Dupay comes in. Stolt with a three. Wonderful screen set up by Wright. Won't go. Ten point pen lead the other way. Lamar Plummer. Into Jordan. Out to Plummer. And back to Ryan. Who is faultless with a riveting first half performance when he knocked down six threes. On his way to 22 points. 23 is his career high. Oh, Hanging inside is Brent Wright, the sophomore. And he will go to the line after he had to burrow his way and carve his way into a thicket of Quaker plays. And again, you can see what Billy Donovan talked about at halftime. Let's pound it inside and make the pressure on the pen defense from the interior. If the Quakers in foul trouble, they have had a hard time guarding the inside gate of Quaker. Free throws in the game. Florida with that one right there. Now going to six of ten. Quakers four of nine. And a bandaged up, wrapped up Mike Miller back out. Langle is back in, leaving his shoulder. Florida getting an at-large bid, a record of 20 and 8. The Quakers are 21 and 5, winning the Ivy League with an automatic berth. Foully ball inside. Wright cleans it up and frees himself to get some breathing space. The size becoming a factor in this ballgame. 
controlling the offensive glass, Florida. Here comes Detain. Trying to pass it, Ryan, but picks it off. Ryan the other way, meets the defensive right, swings it over to Plummer, to Langle, to Owens, inside, single coverage, up and off, and a foul. Stolt gives it up inside for Florida. Not easy for Stolt to defend Owens. Gives up three inches, some poundage down low. Nobody comes to help, and Owens pretty good with the footwork and go either way again when he catches it in the post to the right shoulder or the left shoulder on the block. He looks no worse the wear, broken jaw, wired shut, extra tight. He's been this way for about two weeks, and he asked if he lost any weight. He said about four or five pounds or something. That's amazing. That's simply amazing. When they travel and go to restaurants, he simply asked if they can put everything that he'd like to eat in the blender. <laughs> He'll use the straw. Owens hits the second free throw. The surprise continues in Seattle. The Quakers lead by 10 in the second. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg in New York. St. John's with a 46-33 lead on Samford. We'll keep that score at the bottom part of your screen and tell you what's happening in Denver, where New Mexico and Missouri are doing battle right now and a three-point lead for the Lobos. Very tight game here, as you can see by the score. Missouri ran off 11 straight points to start the second half, took a short lead, and now New Mexico back on top. This is going to be a game, I think, that continues to go back and forth. Kenny Thomas and Albert White. Kenny Thomas for New Mexico, Albert White for Missouri. Probably the guys that both teams are going to run their offense through the rest of the night. They're continuing to be the focal points. Missouri, 13 points and 11 rebounds. And that's Kenny Thomas you're looking at right now at the free throw line. 14 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 block shots. Make it 15 points now for a guy who in uh, 6 prior tournament games in the NCAA averaged 9 points a game. In Indianapolis, Murray State and Ohio State, 10-point lead for the Buckeyes now, Clark. It was as large as 16, but Murray State, the racers won't go away. And right now, they feel like they've got some momentum and looking to try to cut into the double-digit lead. Murray State's been hurting themselves badly. 12 turnovers and shooting less than 30% from the floor, and yet they're still within shouting distance. They're hanging around. Again, you get a couple of threes to go handle the ball a little better, and you turn the game around a little bit from the standpoint of Ohio State has been comfortable throughout most of this second half because they've had that double-digit cushion. If things tightened up, you never know how the team on top of the scoreboard would react to that. Ohio State led this game 32-21 at halftime, and Murray State still trying to find their shooting touch. Full court pressure here. Ohio State had to call the timeout to readjust. Good attack that time. Brian Brown finding it looked like Jason Singleton. And anytime a team's going to press, you've got to be thinking about attacking it for scores at the other end. In the key arena in Seattle, Penn and Florida. It is now a 48 to 38 lead for Pennsylvania and Penn, 11 of 18 from three point range. That's been the story of their game so far tonight. And they made all of those three point shots in the first half. In the second half, this game has kind of been in screensaver mode, if you will. Not a whole lot going on. Both teams just kind of feeling their way. Penn with the 10 point margin has been content to use an awful lot of time on the shot clock with each possession. As we send you back to Orlando, we will tell you that University of Connecticut Huskies, the top seed in the West, will go it tonight without their head coach. Jim Calhoun is laid up in his hotel room with a case of intestinal flu. Assistant Dave Leto will coach them this evening. Let's send you back to Iron Eagle and Jim Spinarco. Ten minutes and 52 seconds remaining in the second half of play. St. John's on top of Sanford. 50 to 34. St. John's the number three seed. Sanford seeded 14. And Sanford has been trying to get these back to our guts the entire game. They have not been able to do it. That time they execute one. The foul was called as before the shot. So Sanford is not going to get the basket and the chance for the three-point play. Rawlings will go to the line for a one and one. Very little has gone right for Jimmy Tillett and Sanford this evening, and Jimmy Tillett is letting the officials know about that one. So Rawlings at the line. He has seven points, make it eight. 
Chutney Gray checking back in for the Red Storm. Reggie Jesse takes the seat. Reed Rollins. Second free throw is good. 50 36. Barkley, Artest, Chutney Gray, Postel, as well as Bootsy Thornton on the court for the Red Storm. Barkley has really done a nice job controlling this St. John's offense tonight. Inside our test from Thornton. And there's another perfect example. You penetrate, you draw the defense, make the pass, and then the defense simply can't rotate to everybody. Eventually, someone's open inside. Excellent pass. Prototype point guard, Barkley. He averaged 27 points a game when he was in high school, went to Christ the King, as well as Maine Central Institute for prep school. And I asked him before the game, I said, wow, you averaged a lot of points when you are in high school. Uh, you probably would like to shoot a little bit more. He said, hey, that's not my job. I enjoy running the team. That's what I'm here to do. Jump shot by Rawlings, no good. Barkley tracks it down in the corner. That's the great thing about Barkley. His job is to try to win, and he'll do whatever it takes to win. Gray rebounded inside by Lopez. That's the problem for Sanford all night has been their inability to convert on the offensive end. Nine minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the second half. Ron Artest on the break of the easy layup for the Red Storm, and they are running away with this one. Artest. 17 points St. John's they've led by as many as 18 in this basketball game and they are being coached extremely well St. John's really ready for all the backdoor cuts and perimeter defense on this Sanford team Daniel loose ball picked up by Lopez Rawlings lost it and saves it because now you get a little bit of desperation. You get that sense with Sanford. They're hurrying again, not catching the balls cleanly. Just a marvelous effort by St. John's. Daniel. A little tired on that release. 54 to 36. Barkley milks the clock. 20 on the shot clock. Postel facing, and he travels. Other games coming up next. George Washington and Indiana right here. Detroit and UCLA. Texas San Antonio against UConn. In that game, UConn head coach Jim Calhoun will not be on the bench. He has a case of the intestinal flu. Gus and everybody wondering, is this the year that UConn under Jim Calhoun finally gets all the way through the tournament to the Final Four? And Jim Calhoun, I, I know that's not the way he wanted to start his NCAA tournament. Rawlings fouled, going to the basket. And that's actually not a bad defensive play by St. John's, Gus. You can't cut off everything. They're cutting off the backdoor cuts and passes. They're really doing a nice job defending the three-point shot. Something is going to be available. And I think the place where Samford is going to hurt you the least is driving to the basket. And that's what St. John's has given them. And the free throw good for Rawlings. And Reed Rawlings, his father, Buddy, played at Ole Miss. And he played with a guy by the name of Johnny Newman. Back in the late 60s, and Newman, they say, was uh, one of the top scorers in the SEC, right behind Pete Maravich, averaged about 40 points a game. So a basketball family for Reed Rawlings, 54 to 38. Our test, Postel on the baseline, strong. And it's rebounded by Lopez. Keep in mind that Rawlings and Salyers both have four personal fouls for the Bulldogs. Barkley quickly gets up on Lopez. 19 to shoot, Lopez. Because the guys out on the perimeter aren't really ready to shoot when they catch the ball, and they continue to try to force that backdoor play that hasn't been there all night long. Another steal for Barkley. 
but it's taken away. Weaver. Nice block by Rawlings. Bootsy Thornton trying to get it to the basket. Was a little surprised to lose the ball. Inside Salyers again the big hook. Now that looked more like Kareem than George <laughs> Mike. And that was the jump hook there. That didn't come from the hip like the last one did. <laughs> My partner getting on me <laughs> about the George Mikan reference as opposed to Kareem. Gus stay current. 7.05 to go in the second half of play. 54 to 40. St. John's leads Sanford here in Orlando. Game summary, New Mexico leads it by four with 7.26 to play, and the numbers basically even other than the free throws. 8-9 matchup, Jimmy. Pretty much what you expect, close Ab game. Absolutely, it's been well played. The turnovers are down, only 15 turnovers between the two teams. I think you'll see both teams go to their stars down the stretch. And we shall see how Missouri handles the late game situation. This is still a young team, and Albert White has remained on the bench with four personal fouls. They've only gone to the line twice, so the young teams forget that they have to continue to bring the ball into the paint area. Into Monty Harge. Gilbert pulls the trigger, short on a three-pointer, follows his own shot, and a new shot clock for Missouri to operate with. Albert White is inching his way back up the bench. He's now sitting by the coaches, so I'm sure they were under seven minutes, another minute or so. They have to put him back in the ball game. Woods, a three-pointer. Rimming, no. And rebounded by Davis. And now New Mexico satisfied and just slowing it down and using up some clock if possible. They lead by four. Not long. Here's the dump down for Thomas. Thomas. Matched up with Harge. He's had problems against Harge getting around him. Thomas fading away. Hey, Harge's doing a nice job on him. Davis able to save it for Roland Hanna. Running out. Grower couldn't grab it. And it is going the other way. New Mexico could not hold on to it. And Missouri takes over, trailing 53 to 49. Brian Grower. Altitude or not, Grower has been in there every minute. Monty Harge. Oh, the big fella finally gets a soft touch to go down. Going off the glass, and Harge now has seven. We've got a two-point game, under six minutes to play. Henry, three-pointer, too strong. Hanna, offensive rebound, a little bit short on the putback, and the ball was stripped away by Grower. Bring it down, and he's going to be around it. Good decision here, go easy. Clarence Gilbert can't hit it for three. It came high off the window and had it with the ball. A 20-second timeout has been called by Dave Bliss in New Mexico. They lead by two. 5.27 left. Premiering Monday here on CBS, John Laroquette returns to television. Don't miss the series premiere of Pain Monday after Raymond, right here on CBS. Dave Bliss, his wife Claudia, here at McNichols Arena tonight. Grew up just five minutes away from downtown Denver in Lakewood, Colorado, so she's home and hoping that it's home sweet home for her husband and the New Mexico Lobos. Looking for any advantage you can get, I guess, once the NCAA tournament rolls around. They are one of nine schools to win at least one game in the tournament the last three years. And on that possession, they turn it over. Lamont Long called for traveling. Missouri down by two. White back in there for the Tigers, and he's fouled on his way to the rim. And that's exactly what he has to do, go right at the basket with the basketball. Coming up next, George Washington in Indiana from the south, Detroit and UCLA here in Denver. It will be number one UConn taking on Texas San Antonio. No Jim Calhoun. He will not coach in this game because of an intestinal virus. 
wide at the free throw line. Cannot hit the first. 68% on the season for Albert White. Remember now, he's been sitting on the bench for a while, so he doesn't have the legs. He's not really warmed up. You come off the bench. That was a better one. He has to get the legs underneath you and bend them. A lot of your shot is driven by how well you get your legs underneath you and the strength from it. Splitting a pair of free throws, and now New Mexico's lead is one. Five minutes left, second half. Long. Good ball movement here as they spread the floor. Good jump up there by Gilbert. Henry likes to shoot that shot off the screens. Shot clock is down to 10. Robinson on a crossover move. Oh, does Grauer ever get his hands on the ball? Shot clock at five. Robinson the jump shot, and the freshman rising to the occasion late in this game. Grauer made a terrific play to come up with that basketball, or strip it, I should say, but no one helped him out to gobble it up. 55-52, New Mexico. Grauer, high post, Schumacher. Don't put it down. You cannot put the ball down with little guys around you. Albert White, did he have possession? Traveling is called. White and Missouri attempted to call a timeout. Grauer was looking for the timeout away from the ball. See, if he has possession before he falls to the floor, once you fall to the floor, it's a travel. I don't think he had possession. I'm not sure he's even close to possession. It looked like it was running down his leg the whole trip. White goes to the bench. New Mexico leads it 55 to 52. The 8-9 game here in the West region. Denver, Colorado. Davis just acting as a release out there. Miles Schumacher to fill up the lane a bit. Long. Under four minutes to play. Davis left open. Schumacher will give him that shot all night. Long leaning in off the glass. Harge was standing there also. What a terrific shot by Long, because I don't think he saw Harge as big as he is down deep. 15 points, 11 rebounds for Lamont Long. And now a five-point New Mexico advantage. Harge banging bodies. Offensive foul. So much of that is timing also from a defensive standpoint. Harge puts the body down, and he's so big, he's getting the attention of the officials. Watch the timing of the Thomas flop. As soon as you get hit, he's not hit that hard, but the timing of it brings the attention of the officials to him. Third personal on Harge, a timeout. 57-52, New Mexico. Back at McNichols Sports Arena, New Mexico with a 57-52 lead on Missouri with 332 remaining here in the second half. Dave Bliss's club has done a good job staving off Missouri here in the second half. Can they hold them off for the final 332? New Mexico has the ball and a five-point lead. Henry defended by Grauer. Well, be patient with the basketball, but I'm sure Thomas will touch eventually. Here he comes up the top. This is Long on a pump fake. Robinson with 13 to shoot. Down to 10. Long will set up the offense with eight. Try to break him down off the dribble. On a crossover, gets by Dueling, and then Missouri recovers for the block. Harge stepped into his path. Grauer thought about it. And now Missouri slows it down and settles into the offense. Down to 2.44 to play. Five-point New Mexico lead. Grauer, high screen set by Harge. Pretty good job out on the perimeter by New Mexico. This is Dueling with seven. Dueling makes his move. Dumps it off for Harge, the jump shot. Too strong. Schumacher, the tap, that doesn't go. Grauer couldn't grab it. Harge does. And a new shot clock for Missouri to work with. Harge got the basketball, but Grauer just made a terrific play. And it keeps the Tigers alive. Norm Stewart takes a timeout. 2.17 left. 57-52. Lobos. The other game out west tonight is Weber State and North Carolina. I think they're going to start gambling a little bit. 
I know they've been pressing, but maybe a hole in the middle of the floor, the rotating guy, take a shot at playing the passing lane. Here's the trap. The page has got to come up. Kick and a reset of the shot clock just puts four seconds back on. So I don't think Scooney looked real quick tonight. No. Not quite the explosiveness we're accustomed to. Home run. Push off. Got to, oh, come on. You got to see that. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jimmy O'Brien's looking at us shaking his head, even though it should have been against his guy. Well, I don't know how you could miss that. <laughs> About 30,000 people here in the Dome all saw it. Went ooh and ah. Push off. Cleared him. A little bit of offensive pass interference from the Indianapolis Colts playing in this building. Now a blocking foul called on Singleton. Uh, out in this open area, this one, this is better than any tavern league in America. You'd call this one. Now there's a discard Whoa. and the catch. <laughs> you see Reese waving his arm. Come on. And the only excuse I can give is the, the lead official is turning to oh run to get into position. That is utterly incredible. You couldn't call it a foul unless it was a game winner in the playground. But in NCAA basketball, you got to give it to him. Reese, well above his season average, 24. Time. Just under three minutes left. Ohio State by 10. Reese up on Penn. Page guarding him. See that little wave and the back cut out of it. Look at the middle of it. He loves that lane, Michael Red. Penn, nice pass. Singleton. An all new Sons of Thunder, CBS Saturday. Here's the situation in Denver. New Mexico with a 57 to 52 lead on Missouri with 217 to play. Team fouls New Mexico with six, Missouri with seven. And you see the timeout situation. Possession arrow favors Missouri. Earlier today, Iowa and Arkansas advanced to the second round and coming up, it will be UConn and Texas San Antonio. Albert White returns for Missouri, playing with four personal fouls. Final two minutes and 10 seconds of action in regulation. On the inside, and he draws the foul. White is going to the free throw line. And not much of a surprise right there with White. He wanted that basketball to go down for him, but a very aggressive setup down deep and going to the basket strongly. Our four attempts. This will be the fifth. Albert White knocks down the first. Sometimes when you haven't been to the line in a long time, and no one has been to the line since last game they've played, it gets a little more difficult to shoot them. You don't have a rhythm. Harge exits. Clarence Gilbert returns. Florida has now taken the lead on Pennsylvania second half action. Some other scores around the NCAA tournament. In bracket St. John's they will win and take on the winner of our next game Indiana and George Washington Brayton and Maryland will also play in the second round Gus and of course Indiana is the higher seed and is favored in that game over George Washington but if George Washington wins the game what you'll set up in the next round is Mike Jarvis coaching his new team against his old team Mixed feelings for Jarvis if that were to happen. Pull up jump shot. Lee Burgess and out of bounds. We stay right here, though. Knocked out of bounds. Uh, last touch by St. John's. 45 and four tenths of a second ago. Sanford fans wanting everybody to just shoot it. And so the guys coming off the bench, Gus, don't have any better luck than the guys who've been playing most of the game. Albert Richardson turns, fires, partially blocked into the hands of Joey Howard. Here's Chris Sparks trying to make something happen. On the baseline, nice deal inside. Stipula loses it. 16.5 to go. 
These St. John's kids are just stubborn, Gus. They're continuing to play tough defense, even though the ball game is well in hand. They're not going to give up anything easily. Cross court, pull up jumper. High bounce, tipped around, knocked out of bounds, and the Bulldogs will get one more chance with 6.8 to go, and the substitutes on the floor. Inside. Nowhere to go. And Charles. And that'll do it. Jams it at the end. Final score. And the final score, St. John's defeats Samford 69-43 to advance to the next round. Now let's go to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Gus, and there they will play the winner of the upcoming Indiana George Washington game. Meanwhile, let's take you out to McNichols Sports Arena in Denver, where New Mexico and Missouri are just two points apart, a minute and a half to play. Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarkle are there. Size Jim O'Brien. Points, 10 rebounds, and four block shots. He has been the go to guy all season long for the Lobos and they will have to go the final minute 31 without Thomas one of the elite players in the nation Thomas takes a chance watch the right arm now he moves it slightly but the official is standing right on top of him and made the call Thomas will watch from the sidelines. We've got a timeout. 59-57, New Mexico clinging. Tonight's game being produced by Bob Monsbach and directed by Mike Arnold, the coordinating producer of the Road to the Final Four, is Eric Mann. It was produced by Vin DeVito and David Winter, directed by Bob Matina. Associate director of today's game is Andy Goldberg. The broadcast associates are Brant Packard and Andy Kaplan. The sideline producer is Jim Drake. And we thank all of those people and the rest of our crew here working long hours, but enjoying every moment of the NCAA tournament as we do every year here on CBS. And a timeout called after the tip in by Ray Cunningham. It'll be a 20 for Sylvester Anderson. And he's not packing it. He's hanging in, getting these guys to compete, and that's what you expect. The little discard, step back, and no nylon, but attacking the rim. And that was one of the things he was hoping they would rebound well, be efficient in their shot selection. He being Sylvester Anderson. And what a start your first year as a coach. Ten point lead for Ohio State. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Michael Red with 24 points, five rebounds. Four assists and Aubrey Reese with 24 points, the only racer in double figures. He is the Chevrolet MVP from Murray State. 109 left. OSU by 10 and a quick foul. Red will go back to the free throw line. Three fouls now on Rod Murray. Well, our crew has decided with. 108 to go. We can project Ohio State as the winner, sort of like on election night. <laughs> well, I'd love to have Bob Monsberg as an alumnus of my program. He gives <laughs> up early on you. Uh, a minute and eight. They're fouling the right guy in their mind. Their preparation was. They understand, as you noted earlier, 62% from the free throw line. Maybe you'll miss a couple, and you can go the other way. Red makes the free throw. Seven of 11 from the line. Fifty nine fifty seven New Mexico with the lead a minute thirty one left here in the second half. Kenny Thomas has fouled out with twenty points and ten rebounds in what may be his final collegiate game unless New Mexico can hold on free throw for Doolin. The freshman cuts the New Mexico lead to one. Smooth at the line for the first shot. Only the third point of the night for Keon Doolin. He can make it four and does. Two picture-perfect free throws, and we are tied at 59. Dealing with a little bit of pressure with 1.30 to go. Another freshman, John Robinson. Doolin took it away. Doolin on the penetration. White went for the jam follow, and it's rebounded by Henry. 
What a regroup also by New Mexico to get back and get that basketball after the missed dunk. Coming up on one minute to play, 59 apiece. Patience and good luck. Henry a three, no good. I don't think that's a good look in this situation. Drifting away from the basket from long, long range. Down to 54 seconds left. Keon Doolin, freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, running the show for Missouri. When will White touch the basketball? I gotta believe it's either gonna go to hard on the box with a kick out. Doolin. Trying to give his team the lead. It rims out. Davis the rebound. Two tough decisions at both ends of the floor. Shot clock has been turned off. And Dave Bliss wants to have a chat with his team. Timeout, 28.6 seconds left. We're knotted up at 59 apiece in Denver. Jim and Ole Sound Man. I used to wear the bow ties myself. I guess I would have worn them later in life if I knew I could win 800. <laughs> Floyd lost it over the end line. Four block shots now for Ken Johnson. George Washington and Indiana tipping off at 10.03. That tip time is set. Detroit UCLA tip time approximate, and I guess it's going to back up some. Because it won't be at 9.57 in this building. It's only about 13 minutes away. Murray State just fouling, trying to extend the game. And Brian Brown will go to the line. Where he's two out of four tonight. At the line for the Buckeyes, number 13, Brown. It'll be a thrill to be here, but a disappointment not getting your guys to play as you would expect. Well, we mentioned Michigan State. And we mentioned earlier today when Winthrop was playing number, the number, number 16 seed has never defeated a number one. About the closest call was Murray State as a 16 seed back in 1990. They almost pulled off the biggest upset in NCAA history and they lost to number one Michigan State in overtime. 75 to 71 Popeye Jones now in the NBA with the Boston Celtics at 37 points for the Racers. Great hands. A strip by Singleton. And the lob to Red. Well, that's the flow they like to get going. Snooty on the money. 27 for Red. And a swat by Johnson, his fifth. Look at him run after the ball. The son of SWAT with a sprint. Jesse Owens will be proud. And the Buckeye fans are on their feet. Jim O'Brien summoned Johnson for a pep talk. <laughs> Want to deliver a message while he was still thinking of it. And Ohio State in the NCAA tournament for the first time in seven years is victorious in round one. Final score, Ohio State 72, Murray State 58. Here's Greg Gumbel in our CBS Sports studio. Michael! Final seconds of the game at McNichols Sports Arena in Denver, New Mexico, and Missouri. Let's go to Iron Eagle and Jim Spinarco. Missouri has to pressure the basketball. I don't think you let it go down without pressure in the perimeter. New Mexico 6 and 0 oh, in games decided by two points or less this season. Final 15 seconds tied at 59. New Mexico probably goes around five seconds or so towards the basket. Long with eight makes his move. Long, short jumper. Got it. Down to three seconds, two seconds. Grower will throw it up. It was blocked. Walker got a piece. And New Mexico has survived. The Lobos move on to the second round in a tight one over Missouri, 61 to 59. Dave Bliss. And the New Mexico Lobos, for the fourth consecutive year, have advanced to at least the second round of the NCAA tournament. A terrific drive by Long down. Look at the hang time. Actually shoots that basketball on the way down. Still plenty of time. The Tigers had a timeout. And there's the reaction by Thomas. 
is standing and watching. Missouri did have one final attempt. Brian Grower from three-point range for the win. And Walker getting a piece. Norm Stewart, 32 years he's been at this. This is his reaction. And that's it. Once again, the final from Denver, New Mexico, for the 61 to 59 victory over Missouri. And the Lobos advance to the second round where they will meet the winner of the Yukon Texas San Antonio matchup. That's coming up next here at McNichol Sports Arena. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Kenny Thomas, 20 points, 10 rebounds, and four blocks. Albert White, 16 points and 12 rebounds in a losing effort. Lamont Long, they call him Froggy. He can get up in the air. Long needed that hang time for the short jump shot. He actually shot it on the way down, and that's a winner. Well, Hard stepped in his path. Great concentration down the stretch. Well coached, well executed. You want to be shooting that ball with about five or under. Did not allow the Tigers to come down the other end of the floor and get a good look. They were pressured the entire way. A great reaction defensively also by New Mexico. 61 to 59, New Mexico has knocked off Missouri in first round action from the West region. It was a close one, throughout, but the Lobos move on. They're going to the second round. Kenny Thomas, he lives to see another day here in the NCAA tournament. Let's go to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Ian, we'll take you back now to Seattle to Key Arena, where Pennsylvania has managed just 10 points in the second half. They trail Florida. Let's rejoin Kevin Harlan and John Sunbold. Another free throw made by Shannon. Two and a half remaining in this second half. Number six seed Florida leading the 11 seed Penn Quakers from the Ivy League, 66 to 53. Lango losing the ball. And that typifies the kind of half it has been for the Penn Quakers, who led by 13 points at one time in the first half, led by 11 at halftime. But they shot 18% in the second half and have been outscored 32 to 10 in the second half. The Gators look to advance under coach Billy Donovan. Timeout. After a terrific first half, in which the Quakers hit 11 three-point shots. A riveting performance. They have come out and gone so flat in the second half, shooting in this trail 66-54. Well, simply 18% leads to a lot of missed opportunity and missed shots, and the rebounds Florida has taken care of that department. The second half has been zero for Penn. Michael Jordan puts in a three-point shot. He's got 15. Michael Jordan, the best player on this Penn Quaker team, as Teddy Dupay goes the other way, looking for Stolt, not as Shannon. And to right in the final two minutes. Kevin, you think about this ball game. Jed Ryan had 22 the first half for Penn. Matt Langle had 14. They combined only missed one jump shot between them. 10 of 11 from three-point land. The second half, neither one has scored. So Billy Donovan's ball club at halftime went in and said, will get to their shooters, make them put it on the floor. They did that. They forced turnovers, and offensively, Donovan's ball club simply threw it inside, and their force was too tough. Owens and Romantic foul out for Penn, and it's been totally domination. So Shannon puts it in, and that's all you see on the sideline now, and the hopes were so high at halftime with a 43-32 Penn Quaker lead. Shot 56% from the field, 65 from three-point land, and put on quite a show for all the people here in Seattle. Great coaching by Donovan. Mm -hmm. Jordan in the lane, floats and